familiar passage there. Let's all stand and read what Jesus said. And uh, Matthew 7, verse 12. It's about the golden rule, and the title is Why the Rule is Golden. Why this rule is golden. Out of all the things that are said, he says this is the one that we need to get hold of. Verse 12 says, Therefore, comma, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So this was not an original thought that he brought that never had been thought of, but he says this has never changed. This is an unbending rule. He said the prophets taught it. He said the law has it contained in that. And he gives us the reason why this rule is golden. So Lord, we ask you to guide us now these uh, few minutes together and then enjoy the fellowship. And I already asked you to bless the food and the hands that have prepared it. Thank you for this uh, new year upon us still. Thank you for the safety of the weather. Others are still suffering from that. But you uh, spared us and gave us some a nice white day without danger. So we ask you now to meet our needs as we meet the needs of others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. This is the verse 12 is a shorthand version of this golden rule. Now the uh, <coughs> I should say this fast-paced life how many agree with that? this fast-paced life, it seems it's getting more difficult to make the absolute right decisions. Right? So we have to make so many decisions. That how do we know they're going to work out? Well, if you follow the rule, more than likely they'll all work out. If you stop and think, well, let me analyze this through the lens of the golden rule of what Jesus said. We work with people, normally we make decisions that involves others, does it not? So you always want to make the right decision. But here we see Jesus makes decision making quicker and easier with just one simple rule. And the rule is, do unto others before they do it unto you. <laughs> well, that's what most people practice, isn't it? Like I say, you know there's revival in the land when there's no more small print on the ads on TV or the fast talk. You'll know that things are right with God. How many remember days when there wasn't no small print and fast talk? Yeah. And what the packet says is what it was. And what you heard on the news was the news and not news commentary. That's what we have today, sort of through half-truths and propaganda. This is the old saying, uh, let's walk a mile in my moccasins for a change. In other words, consider others uh, in your decision making. Now, I looked up uh, a little while ago, all the major religions have things sort of like this, not worded like this. But uh, we see that every religion teaches this is the very best way to live one's daily life. That this is the very best way. And all religions teach this. They actually have, uh, I guess, a sign or poster in the UN that was put there in uh, 2020, I believe it was. And it's a kind of a circle of the gold. It's called the Golden Rule right in the middle, but all the different. Buddhism, Shintoism, Taoism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, it's all around the circles and it has each one of their statements and it's, it's in the halls of the, the United Nations, actually. And uh, I saw that online a little while ago. So every uh, religion teaches this, that this is the best way to live a daily life. Now, it won't save you Amen. Amen. Won't save you, but it will make it easier on the people that you are around. 
Do you understand? We'll double check what we say and how we act towards others. So it can't save anybody, but it will make it easier on the people that we are around. Don't expect the lost people to do this. Some do this thinking they're going to heaven. It's all works, isn't it? Isn't that what religion is? It just works. Now, one, one was interesting. Uh, the Roman uh, Empire, they, they can trace these thoughts all the way back to Egypt. Uh, you know, thousands of years earlier, uh, this concept. And uh, but in Rome, I was uh, interested in that one. Uh, the Roman version is uh, "Do unto your inferior what you would want your superior to do to you." Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. Treat your inferior, as those below you, as as you would want your superior to treat you. Because isn't it something where you treat people ugly, and God sees to it that somebody treats you ugly? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what goes around comes around, or something like that. So that's not karma, you know, in Hinduism, but uh, God does settle the score, doesn't he? So I like that one from Rome, and uh, didn't say the Catholics, it just said from Rome. Treat your inferior as you would want your superior to treat you. Now let's go to this rule and look up a few things here real quick. There are five things we see in this one verse. And here are some of the reasons that the rule is golden. Just some of the reasons, and it's found right in the verse itself. So first off, we have that uh, this rule, it answers prayer. It says, therefore, come. What is the therefore, therefore, when you see a therefore? Well, you go back earlier, several verses, and see what's been said, and then you get to the therefore. And that's why they're going to write the next thing, is what they've already said before that. So let's go to 7, verse 7. He's teaching on prayer. Okay? Jesus teaching on prayer. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, and which is in heaven, give good things to them that, what? Ask him, not demand. So therefore, it's the next word. So it helps answers prayer God may use you to be an answer of prayer for somebody. And just the way we treat them, this golden rule. Therefore, live like this because somebody's praying. Somebody, you need something. And God may send somebody to you and after the therefore to meet your needs and treat you uh, like you ought to be treated. Just like Jackie mentioned, somehow, uh, God knew her need, you know, to get the pressure off of her, and she could have gotten legal trouble uh, not even knowing that somebody was setting her up because they weren't doing their job. So that was good to see that. Now, uh, you can't pray when you're living in sin. People don't want to pray when they're in sin, except maybe the Catholic priest or the Pope. I don't Seems like they can get by with everything. Now, so what does Psalm 66, 18 say? Look real quick there, because some of you don't have it marked. But this is a great verse on prayer and sin. 66, 18, good memory verse. And we have here, it says a song or a psalm. It's not David's. 66, 18 says, If I regard... 
iniquity which is sin, if I regard iniquity in my heart, in my heart, the Lord what? will not hear me. If I regard sin in my heart, iniquity, the Lord will not hear me. So we must be careful when we pray to examine our heart and see if we qualify for an answered prayer. And going back to chapter 7, let's go to read uh, verse 1 to 6. It starts off, and it's really a preparation for prayer. And then, of course, you get to the therefore, which we're still on, that first point. So, Jesus tells us in 7, 1, Judge not that you be not judged. This is, this is lifestyle verses here, how we are to live. Because we're not going to keep the golden rule unless we keep the verses before the golden rule. That's what he has, the therefore, therefore. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Got any judges here that's proud of it? Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that are judges and their juries and their executioners all rolled up into one. They know why you did what you did. Even though they don't know why you did what you did, they know why you did it because they have judged the situation. And they, they have not exercised the golden rule in their judgment. How many like to be accused of stuff and ridiculed for stuff? Criticized for stuff. How many like that? Oh, I just thrive. I just I wish somebody criticized me right now. <laughs> Ruin my life and make me feel bad about myself. No, but we if we're not careful, we will do that to others. That's not part of the golden rule, is it? We might not do it to their face, but we might do it to somebody else. Trying to lift our steam up because we are so low down anyway. With what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure you meet or dish it out, it shall be measured or dished out to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote? Uh, what is a mote anyway? This little tiny sliver, uh, sawdust maybe, or yeah. mote that is in the brother's eye, but consider it's not the beam that is in the eye. So we. We need to be careful what we're looking for in people. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be tracking everybody else down. We got enough to do, don't we, for, for God? Yes. Don't we have enough to do without dragging other people into our life? Yes. But consider it's not the beam or telephone pole that sticks out of your own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye. Behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite. First, notice how nice Jesus says about this. <laughs> <laughs> the man of manners here. Thou hypocrite. Well, it's better than sons of snakes like he uses uh, for the Pharisees. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote that is out of thy brother's eye. And then he says, Give not that which is holy unto the dog. Don't waste your time. Don't waste good words. Uh, some people, neither cast ye your pearl before swine. In other words, choose your battles carefully, right? You don't have to get uh, swallowed up in uh, people's problems all the time. Neither cast your pearls before swine. How many know this? Certain people don't want your advice. And, and, and you find that you've wasted all this time with somebody. They were just a walking black hole person that drags you down into their gutter. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So he shows us how we are to live our life and uh, get ready to help others. And then, so we've covered verse 1 to 11. Uh, just here because it answers prayer. Now secondly, so we see the rule here won't bend. You cannot break this 
rule, bend this rule, change this rule. It's a, it's, it's a universal rule. That's why it's called the golden rule. The Bible doesn't call it that, but we know that this is the best way we ought to live. So it, it answers prayer first. Secondly, it, it applies to all areas of life. Therefore, and then the second part, all things. So it applies to all areas of life, all things whatsoever. All things whatsoever. There's an, another comma there. Maybe I'll put it there. I'm not sure. Do yours have a comma there? Well, I, I must have put it there so I'd stop and look at it. Look at it. And uh, so all things, it, it applies to all areas, it's, it's universal. It applies to business, recreation, work, home, school, and church. So what, whatsoever, therefore, he says, all things whatsoever. So apply this in any part of life, it's a universal rule, that's why it's golden. You can't bend this, you cannot change this. This is the way God has made things to work. Number three, we see here it applies to, to every man, but not only every area, all areas, it applies to every man. Therefore, number one, all things whatsoever, number two, then it says that you would that men should do to you. Come, my come. So we have here, it applies to every man, that you would, that you would, that man should do to you. <clears throat> and uh, so we have the, uh, some, there used to be a, a, a movie came out, a western, and what was the tune to that? Remember that? What was that? Yeah. See, Brother Gray knows a lot about Hollywood movies. <laughs> it was it was uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly western. Yeah. Clint Eastwood. Who can whistle that real good? That, that was the, the movie. Every few minutes, it, that whistle would come in there. I see, Jackie's trying anyway. <laughs> I had to practice long. It was so long ago. I think that thing came out in the '60s, maybe. And so uh, it applies to every man, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everybody we meet, he says, apply this. Apply this rule to everybody. So it's, it's universal in all areas of life, and it applies to every man uh, on the earth. There is uh, no one that you can avoid in doing this. When we see an opportunity, we are to take that opportunity. Aren't you glad somebody witnessed to you some time ago? They took the time to, they took the effort, they made the first move, maybe asked you a question or did you a favor. So it answers prayer, it applies to all areas of life, it applies to every man that we meet, a woman, a child. Number four goes on, it obligates every man. So it is to be used for every situation, for every man, and it is to be done, uh, it obligates every, especially Christians, it obligates us. So I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Well, if you live by the golden rule, you wouldn't have to worry about that. You know what you'd be doing tomorrow. You'd be out in the vineyard. You'd be out there in the uh, back 40, as it's called. You'd be involved with people and how to lead them to Christ, how to show them a Christian life. So it obligates every man. It goes on and says, do ye even so to them. So you have the therefore, number one, all things whatsoever, number two, you would that men should do to you, number three. And then he says, do ye even so to them. So we're obligated. Number four, it obligates every Christian to live by this rule. You might say, or I might say, well, I'll tell you what, I sure wish somebody would buy me a milkshake. Well, what does that mean? Well, maybe I ought to go buy somebody a milkshake. You know, 
that's due unto others as if you would like somebody to buy you a milkshake, then why don't you just go out and buy somebody one and do them and make them as happy as you would be. Because yeah. if somebody walked up and gave you ten dollars, you'd say, Man, I feel I, I'm I feel good. I'm glad. How about a hundred dollars, right? Ten don't mean much now. It's like finding a quarter. I asked uh, my grandsons, I said, hey, uh, you want to roll of quarters? No, I said, you want some quarters? He said, no, I don't think I don't need any. Well, a roll of quarters is how much? $10. That kid turned down $10. I said, okay. I said, hey, would you like a $10 bill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how, I hate to say it, ignorant, the next generation is. <laughs> Ignorant, it ain't, they can't even spell it right. So, uh, it obligates every man. So, yeah, I'd like somebody to buy me a milkshake or give me $20. Then so why don't I turn that, what would make me happy, and then go make somebody else happy, which will make me even happier. It's more blessed to give than to receive, as Paul taught over in Acts 20. I wish someone would uh, cut my grass. Well, maybe I'll find a way to help somebody cut their grass that really needs it. Some shut-in, some older person. Brother Hanson used to like to cut grass, but now the grass cuts him. <laughs> they got that right. <laughs> so I'll cut someone. And you see what I'm saying? We want somebody to make us feel better when actually we should be the one obligated to make some, and if everybody did this, everybody be happy. Instead of waiting for somebody else to show initiative, then what does it say? If we know to do good and do it not to, to him, it is sin. Over in Romans. So I wish someone would cut my grass. Well, maybe I'll just cut someone else's grass. Living like this makes others important people in our lives. We get to meet so many more folks. They, even the guys that work at the convenience store down there I've made friends with and have helped some of them out and some of them helped me. And just, you meet people like this. I said, why are you doing that? I said, because you need it. He said, yeah, but you don't have to do that. I said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I, I need to do this. And I tell them I need to do this so they'll take the help or take the money that I know they need. Now, favors. You know what What are favors? It's, a, it's, a, it's an act of grace, isn't it? What is grace? An unmerited favor? What are favors? It should be an act of grace. And we have to remember, we don't have to charge for everything we do now, do we? We don't have to charge for everything. We're in this materialistic society and we're going to have, and I, and I, I think it's coming in my lifetime, a major collapse of world economy. I mean, to pay $11 an hour for minimum wage, as I said, some of you go in for sale since you work for 50 cents an hour, or was a brother done the other day? Was he a 50 cent guy? Dollar, I, I've started at a dollar sixty an hour, and now people, are, by law, are eleven dollars and fifteen cents an hour. And you know, an hour goes by pretty quick. And if you don't have somebody really hustling to make make you money, you're gonna you're gonna lose your shirt. You're gonna have to go out of business. But the law, the law says, well, why don't we just show up and do some favors, you know? And uh, save people some money instead of charge for everything because that breeds <coughs> insecurity, it breeds greed, selfishness, and uh, it divides people. But I think we're going to see a major collapse. We already went through one, you know, and was it 27, 2007, 2008? I, mean, I haven't forgot that. I've forgotten how many people were out of work and how many people were dying in wars and rumors of war. We're, that's what sent us to, well, we got the bombings in the year 2000, and we had the 
cell phone uh, invented in 03. MySpace started in 03. Facebook started in 04. Twitter started in 06. And then everybody could communicate all over the world with your phone. And then we had the entire world nearly collapse financially because of greed and people cheating in multi-million dollar deals and it affected your real estate, our real estate, our food prices, our gasoline prices. Remember $5 a gallon for gas we have right now? It's back. It's back. Maybe not in Springfield, but I don't like paying $3 for gas. Right. Remember when it was $1.89? Just a year and a half ago? So it obligates, it applies to every man, it applies to every area of life, and it answers prayers, ours and others. Lastly, let's uh, finish up here. Shows obedience to God's civil law system. Shows obedience because it, Jesus says here, do you even so to them we're obligated? And then it shows that we are obeying God's law system that he has set up. For this is the what? How many of you remember that song? I fought the law in the... <laughs> Some of you can probably sing that from memory. When he was running from the cops, trying to stay out of jail. For this is the law and the prophets. This, this will not change. This law does not bend and it does not break. It shows obedience to God's civil law system. Turn to uh, 1 Timothy 1 real quick. 1 Timothy 1 verse, verse 5 through 11, I believe it is. 1 Timothy 1 verse 5. Now, as I said, we are not to work for the government unless you're hired by them. We're not to work against the government either. There's two extremes. Separation of church and state, right? So we, we're not to work for the government just because they said so. That's what the mandate was all about. Everybody's going to get a shot or you'll lose your job and be incarcerated in other countries. But they were showing the other day, China News, it smuggled out of China video, and they had an entire 20-story building and nobody was allowed to leave because of the Olympics are starting, you know, in two weeks in China. And they don't want anybody that's got COVID out of their houses. They're welding the doors shut on people's homes so they can't come out. And they welded all those people in that high rise were not allowed to come out and they sealed the doors until the quarantine was over. And some people had no food and they, if you hoarded food, they, they would come and get it. And then on a loudspeaker in one smaller town, they played like siren, you know, uh, tornado sirens we had. Well, over there, they, they have loudspeakers like that, that. When they talk, the whole city gets to hear on all these loudspeakers as they go around with the message for the public. Now that's China. That's where we're headed if something, if we don't stand up, if we don't work for the government, they have to or they die and they disappear. And they had a woman's voice that was saying, and they translated it when they smuggled out. It wasn't the big cities, but you know, you have people in Washington that give out laws, right? But you have people in smaller communities that accelerate that and add their own two cents worth on top of it. And so you really have to know what the law from the top said. But the time we got to these village <coughs> cities, then the, the woman's voice says, anyone caught outside, you're to take a ax handle or a hoe and kill them in the streets. That's, that was the translation the fear of the people in, in, in China to keep them in their houses. So, so we're not to work for just because they said so. We do have a constitution, you understand. 
And uh, we're the only nation on earth probably has one you can fit in your top pocket and carry it with you. That's the law. Amen. Amen. And I know in Canada, I've tried to read that thing, and it's, you got all the Canadians, you got the French, you have the Indians, you have all. I asked Ben Thompson, have you ever looked over the Constitution of Canada? And he said, no. He said, well, I tried. I've actually looked at the Constitution of China. It looks almost like ours. But guess what? They enforce it like they want to. It means nothing. And that's what they're trying to do here, is to get the people to work for the government. But not all the government's like that. Just a few evil people that wiggle their way in. So we're not to work for them, we're not to work against them, we're to work with the government. The government that God gave us. The laws, and it tells us here, now the end of the commandment is love or charity out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. In other words, Christians are not living the Christian life uh, like verse 5. But it says, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof <coughs> they affirm. But we know that the law is bad. No, what does it say? You would think, you would think today, the way Christians are acting, that's that's the way they would read it that way. The law is bad. The law is bad. What it says, no, the law that God gave us is good. There was only one law, and Adam and Eve couldn't even keep that one. And neither could we if we were in the garden. We, we've done more than Adam and Eve had ever been recorded in their 930 years. But we know that the law is good if a man use it, what? Like God wants it to be used, all right? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a saved man, a righteous man. How many wish you could drive down Johnson Street at 80 miles an hour? No. Why? Somebody get killed, wouldn't they? Well, that's a uh, saved man thinks, should think that way. The golden rule demands it. Do unto others. I wouldn't want somebody driving 80 miles an hour down the street full of kids playing. So you see how this law works. That's why Jesus said it, it is the law and the prophets. But the law is not made for righteous men, but for the lawless. Now, a lot of the guys and girls that invaded the capital, some had a plot there to overthrow. They already had it planned out. It's, it's now known they're in court. They're, some are going to jail for it because they were lawless. They said, we're going to have a civil war today. And they actually tried. It was like 11 people out of the crowd. They found out were ringleaders of their own group within the, the major group. Not everybody was there to have a civil war. They were. For the lawless and disobedient, <coughs> for the ungodly, the laws for the sinners, the laws for the unholy and profane, and laws for murderers and for fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, the laws for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. I reckon that's the homo community. And the men that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers, uh, for liars, the law is made for perjured persons, and that's your scammers, by the way. And the law is, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, the law was made for those people too. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So we see here that the last thing that Jesus said, this is the law and the prophets. So this, this golden rule shows obedience to God's civil law system. We don't need to fight just because the government said it. We need to examine the law and see if this is what the Bible teaches. I think it says, let all things be done haphazardly on the spur of the moment. And 
let all things be done decently and in order. And that's the way, kind of law and order, don't we? There's nothing wrong with God's law. So just because we rebel against man's law, doesn't, don't, don't get caught up violating God's law along with that. So we see the rule is golden because it answers prayer, it applies to all areas of life, it applies to every man, it obligates every man, and it shows obedience to God's civil law system. I think I taught this back in 1999, that's just the other day. What was the issue? Buckle up, it's the law. Remember that, how many people fought and the helmet law and all these other laws, but they were the laws were made to, to keep people alive. Did you know that? Sixty-four percent of people that die in vehicle crashes, right? Sixty-four percent in Missouri die because they won't buckle up still. Sixty-four percent. All these young kids getting killed at 18, distracted driving. They got laws, you know, and Missouri's one of the last ones to to say no texting and driving now. It used to be if you're under 21. But people, by the thousands, have been killed by violating good godly sense. I, I used to not buckle up because I was just used to not buckling up as a kid. But now with the crazies and the accidents and people running lights, I buckle up while I leave. Oh, yeah. I mean, not to, not to make my wife happy. Uh, you better buckle up. I will. Yeah, but I mean, before you go down the street. But somebody may come out of an alley and you'll never see it coming. Now, lastly, let's look at 6.30 of Luke. We've got to eat. Luke 6.30. It is 7.30 now. And so... We saw that one verse, we call that the shorthand version of the golden rule. In Luke 6, uh, verse 60, excuse me, Luke 6, verse 30 to 38. This is the longhand version of, of that rule. Starts in 30 to go, to go to 38. Jesus said here, now think about the golden rule. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Now there's some ways to do this. We won't go into all those ways. It don't mean just because somebody wants everything you got, you got to give it to them. Just you have to use some normal sense. But he says, "Give to every man that asks of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. They take it away." But as you would mention, now here's the. Here's Luke's version of the same verse. And as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them. For if you love them which love you, now sometimes our friendship group only goes to those that carry our DNA, our relatives. Some, some people never live outside of their family tree. But if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? You just keep this giving thing in, in a small group. For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Oh, that's a tough one. Love your enemies. And do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. Sometimes you say, they owe me something. They owe me something. I'll tell you what, I'll never forget. Well, you know, if you just let that thing go, God may have a real surprise package for you. It's, it's, sometimes I just, well, just like Friday night, the trailer, I, I thought I got a good deal on it, working on that, put a roof on it. But somebody drove off with it. Friday night, just took, drove, and, and it wasn't even road ready. The axles were squeaked and all that, but it's gone. And so I called the police and reported it, but uh, they let me know it would be hard to find that trail. And uh, 
But guess what? I said, well, maybe the Lord didn't want me to have that trailer. And maybe somebody else needs that trailer. But the cops are pretty good at finding lost vehicles in this city. They really are. We had a vehicle stolen out from the office years ago. We got it back. Our blue van got stolen. We got that back. But he said, usually within three days, we can, if it's in town, we can find it if it's on the road. But somebody's got that in their backyard, probably off the street. But I can't carry that around and say, oh, I'm telling you what I want to mail. I'm not glad, but I ain't going to let that interrupt my life. Amen. I got bigger fish to fry, as they say. But he says here, <clears throat> Lynn, hoping for nothing again, your rewards, rewards should be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he, God, is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. In 38, read it together. Here we go. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And this is why the rule is golden. It will not change, it will not bend, it will not break. So this is the rule spelled out in longhand, and that one verse in Matthew is the shorthand version of that. So that's what we're going to do. Is go out and we're going to think on purpose about how to initiate the golden rule. There's, there's great benefits, and great happiness, and great joy, and great prosperity in, in setting the example for the lost world. So, Lord, we thank you for the time we've had in the Word of God. We ask you now to bless the song of, of the hour. We ask you again to bless the food that we're going to go and eat in just a few minutes. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand and turn to page number 103. 103, praise the Lord. And, uh, Thank you, Lord, for this golden rule. Yeah. 103, as we sang. <clears throat> 